Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new. My name is Kristen, I'm a lifestyle vlogger and today I have another what's for dinner video for you guys. My dog is <laughs> click clacking around back there. No, I have not done my dishes yet. I got a comment in another video about my dishes. I do my dishes by hand and sometimes I just don't feel like doing them. Typically though, I'll wait until the end of the day after dinner to do a big load. I didn't do any yesterday. Those are like two days worth of dishes back there. Life happens, okay? We are real and honest and raw on this channel. I don't sugarcoat it. I do not have a dishwasher. I am the dishwasher and sometimes the dishwasher don't feel like doing the dishes, okay? So with that out of the way, yes, there are dirty dishes in my videos sometimes if you want this is more than you're probably asking for. I'll put a timestamp for when things start here. But these are all clean. Those are all dirty. <laughs> anyway, in case it's just bothering you back there. I know sometimes it bothers some folks. Hey, if you're able to keep on top of your dishes and keep them clean and good on you, like I said, I normally do all of mine in the evening. So today, for today's dinner, we are going to be doing a black bean and rice and sausage dish this is going to be super easy especially for me because i'm working with leftovers it's like the perfect meal to do with some leftovers if you don't have leftovers though just get some brown rice and some black beans or pinto beans or great white northern beans red beans whatever beans float your fancy and do up some spanish rice mexican rice whatever you want to call it a very easy way to do up some mexican rice will be to do whatever serving size of rice you need. Cook them in the water with some chicken bouillon cube. Your rice will absorb the flavor of the chicken bouillon cube, give it some really good flavor, fluff it up real nice, and then mix in some salsa. You'll get that flavor real quick without having to do a whole bunch of spices. That's how I tend to do it. So let me turn you around and we'll get started on reheating mine and kind of combining everything. So the dinner I'm making is for both my husband and I. Uh, he recently had a carry-in at work, not a carry-in, a, um, oh, they, uh, catered at his job for lunch. So he was able to bring home the leftovers. So we have this giant thing of brown rice from Quadoba. There's little bits of chicken in there, which don't hurt nothing. You guys don't have to have chicken in yours. Again, I'm working with leftovers. And then they also sent home a big thing of black beans. Now my stuff is already seasoned, so convenient for me. But like I said, you can just add in some salsa to taste and it'll give you some good flavor. So I like when I'm reheating things like this and I know I'm just feeding me and my husband, we're gonna measure it out into the bowl that we're gonna be eating out of first. So along those lines here, we give each person two scoops of rice and a big old helping of beans, like so. And then into the pot. And this just helps me from having to like dirty up any measuring cups or spoons. And then the smoked sausage I am using is from Bar S. I want to say this is around five to six dollars at Walmart, and you get 14 count smoked sausages, and they're really tasty. So. You can always do the big Elk Ridge ones. Those get kind of pricey though for how much you're getting. Highly recommend this, pretty much the same thing. So I'm gonna do three hot dogs in here. And I'm just gonna use a paring knife and slice them up. Since I'm working with leftover rice, I'm gonna add in a fourth of a cup of water into my bowl here. So while my rice is reheating, it'll absorb the water back in on itself. It'll fluff back up really nicely. It's not gonna continue to dry out. So give it all a nice little mix up here. And we can go add this over on the stove. Oh, I didn't hit play, sorry. <laughs> I added in some salsa here. I just eyeball it, throw enough in to give it a good coating. You don't want to saturate it. You don't want it to be wet from the salsa. Just get in, give it enough to mix in well. Okay. Then you don't have to do this. If you don't have it on hand, please don't feel like you need to use it. 
But if your children are like mine, these red pepper hummuses may look familiar. If you have some sour red pepper hummus, feel free to grab that. But my son did a jumpstart program before school this summer, and they sent him home a sack lunch every day. He got several of these red pepper hummuses that he won't eat. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw them in here for a little extra flavor. They're not very good on their own, but added in the stuff you can't tell. And they were made of chickpeas, so just good for you, just extra protein and whatever. And again, if you don't have these ones in particular, just grab out some uh, sober hummus if you have it on hand, or you can completely skip this step if you want to. Won't matter either way. Starting to get a really nice sizzle down here at the bottom of my pan. So I think it's time to go ahead and plate this all up. Okay, there we have it, our bowls of sausage beans and rice. Uh, so something we do like to do is add toppings. Some things we like are ranch dressing. Sour cream is another good one. Taco sauce. And if you don't have this on hand, but you like Taco Bell, you may have some Taco Bell packets on hand you can add on top as well. You can also use some tortilla chips for dipping <laughs> and they make for a great meal. So that's it for today. Let's uh, check with you tomorrow. In tonight's dish, we're doing a very simple chicken stir fry. So we're gonna start off by preheating our oven to 350 degrees. And I've got my, I suggest one chicken breast per person. So I've got two fairly large ones. I had a tiny guy, so I'm just throwing him in. I've already got it on a pre-greased uh, cookie sheet. I'm gonna use a little bit of, of spray there. And I also like to use tin foil for this, uh, so it's easier to clean up on my pans. So to my chicken, I'm gonna do salt and pepper, or I guess I'm gonna do pepper and then salt based on, I grabbed the uh, pepper first. Then I've also got some PF Chain teriyaki sauce. Use whatever kind you like. And I'm just gonna lightly baste my chicken before it goes in the oven. I don't wanna go too heavy handed on this because I need most of my sauce. Okay, Levi. I don't like it. I'm sure you didn't, but I think you'll be okay. You wanna go lightly on this um, because you wanna reserve most of your sauce for the main dish. But I like to go ahead and put a light coating on my chicken to start. Remember, hands are made for washing. I've already touched the chicken and I gotta wash them anyways, so why get out my basting brush to make more dishes when I already got to wash my hands? So anyways, um, we're gonna pop this into our oven for about 20 minutes, flip it, and then cook it for another 20 minutes. Make sure your chicken reaches a temperature of 165 degrees or higher, thus we know it's done. At the 20 minute mark, I pulled everything out. We're gonna give it all a good flip. A little bit of teriyaki on this side. Again, don't overdo it. We wanna save most of this for our sauce in the main dish. And then we can just take our spatula and kinda of push everything around. The chicken's hot at this point, so I wouldn't recommend your fingers. Okay, back in the oven for another 20 minutes or until your chicken reaches an internal temperature of 165. In a large pot, I'm gonna get started with my vegetables. I love getting the Normandy blend from Walmart. This is uh, from Bird's Eye. You can find it at other stores, but I find Walmart is the cheapest place to get it. Big old bag of mixed frozen vegetables, carrot squash, broccoli, and cauliflower is what's in here. So I'm gonna use about half a bag in my pot and we're gonna get it on for a simmer. Okay, I've got my veggies going, the medium to high heat back there, and a lid would be good if you have one. I've yet to bring mine from the other house. Need to get that picked up. In a smaller pan, I'm gonna get my rice going. So as you guys know from my last video, or last recipe in this video, I have a bunch of leftover rice. So that's what I'm gonna be using today. If you need to make your own rice, by all means, 
Um, I'm doing two cups of already pre-cooked rice, so you know, it'll be right at two cups when we're all done. So, and of course, it'll be just my husband and I who eat this, the kids won't touch it. So, make like two cups of rice, <laughs> follow your cooking instructions, and throw a boil on cube, like a chicken flavor or beef flavor, or vegetable flavor, whatever you wanna use, into your um, water while you're cooking your rice and the rice will absorb all the flavor of the boil-on cube and give you lots of great flavor. So since I'm using already cooked rice, I'm just gonna throw in a sprinkling of water in here to kind of rehydrate everything. It's kind of dried out a little bit being in the fridge. Otherwise, I'm just reheating rice. <laughs> so that's just shy of one fourth of a cup of water. Just enough to kind of rehydrate everything. Okay, now we just gotta wait till everything's cooked. I've gone ahead and added my rice, since it's reheated already, back into, or on into my vegetables. Um, my vegetables, some of them are still a bit frozen, but the nice thing about having the rice in here is that it's going to continue to absorb that moisture as my vegetables continue to thaw out. I've still got like a nice little ice chunk there. Um, my chicken has finished cooking, and I, I always like, you can get a, chicken, a cooking thermometer to check. But as long as your meat is completely white all the way through and there's no blood, you should be good to go. And that's typically how I judge my chicken on. So I'm just gonna take scissors and start cutting my chicken and letting it drop right on into the pan. And this is gonna help keep the chicken warm as my veggies finish up. At this point, I'm going to add in my teriyaki sauce. If you have an Aldi near you, I recommend getting their teriyaki sauce. Very tasty. I was just at Walmart, so this is the one that I picked up. It wasn't very expensive though. A little bit of a good stir as we go. I'm just gonna give my sauce a chance to warm up as well. And of course, this is to taste, however much sauce you like. We like things saucy, so I'm probably gonna use the entire container. I just added a little bit of water to my jar, give it a good shake, it'll help loosen up some of the sauce that's stuck in there, it's a little, little bit, but that's fine. I'm gonna pour it all in here, get all that goodness out of the jar. Okay, at this point, I'm just gonna let things continue to simmer a little bit longer, make sure my vegetables are cooked, torture my hungry child a little bit more, he's clearly starving. And uh, yeah, so we'll give this probably another three to five minutes, let it all kind of simmer and come together. Here's a look at dinner now that it is done. This gave us enough leftovers that we will be having this for dinner tomorrow. So I'll check in with you guys in a couple of days for our next meal. But for tonight, we're gonna pair it with some naan bread and honey. Do you guys call it naan bread or nan bread? It's N-A-A-N. -A -A Regardless of what you call it, it's freaking delicious. Also a little tip here if you have kids that love pizza Lunchables, $4.98 at Sam's Club for this entire container. Makes perfect pizza Lunchables. A little bit of spaghetti sauce, some cheese. You're good to go, same thing, and it's gonna save so much money. I didn't even buy pizza Lunchables last week. <laughs> okay guys, today's meal is gonna be super easy. We're gonna be doing a green bean, potato, and sausage uh, casserole. That's how it was listed online. I just found this recipe on Facebook. I've made it before myself, but I've always done it in a crock pot, and it's always been a little more watery, you gotta like strain it. So I thought we'd try it this way and see how it turns out. So go ahead and preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and get yourself a nice casserole dish, whatever you wanna use. So my husband and I are the only ones who will be eating this because my kids won't touch vegetables. And we all see children out there like that. It's, it's hard guys, it's hard. <laughs> so we're just gonna start off by cutting our potatoes into bite-sized pieces. Okay, so far I've gotten two potatoes chopped up in my pan. I think I'm gonna leave it at that for now. If I need to add more potatoes, I can, but again, it's just my husband and I eating it, so we're gonna stop here with two. So I think about one potato per person should be good. Now, this is something I'm adding in. Um, you can also do corn if you want to. You can do mushrooms. Uh, there's lots of little things you can add into this. It's a great way to just kind of use up some things you have sitting around the house. I have a random bag of frozen corn, so. I think it's a good opportunity to put that to use. Sorry, did I say corn? Carrots. A random bag of frozen carrots. And I'm just kind of breaking them up best I can to try to 
evenly layer them around the pan. They don't seem to want to come apart very well though. To this, I'm going to add one bag of frozen green beans. Ooh. And then the star of the show here is going to be the smoked sausage. So I have some leftover smoked sausage from when you barbecued out the other day. So I'm just going to take four of these and use what I have on hand. It's what I always recommend to you guys. Use what you have on hand. Um, so I'm going to use up my leftovers. But if you don't have leftover smoked sausage, obviously just... <laughs> We'll get some out of your fridge. And we're just going to cut them up into bite-sized pieces and sprinkle them on top. Okay, now that we have everything in our casserole dish, baking pan, whatever, we're going to take a little bit of non-stick spray. And this is just going to, I like to use the butter flavor because it gives extra flavor. You can use regular cooking oil if you want to. We don't need a whole lot. We're just gonna spritz it over top of everything and then add our spices. The, uh, the spray oil we just used is gonna act kind of like an adhesive and help make the spices stick to our food. The spices I'm using is Grillmates Applewood Rub. But if you have just like a steak and chop seasoning sitting around, those are really good on here as well. Or you can keep it simple and just do salt and pepper or garlic salt and pepper. Um, and then I'm also gonna use some minced onions. If you would rather chop an onion and, and add in, you are more than welcome to do so. Uh, I just don't like big bites of onion and this gives me the onion flavor without big bites. So I'm gonna take my hands and just kind of mix everything together. Remember, hands are made for washing. <laughs> Say it with me now. And then when it comes to the spices, as you guys notice, I just eyeball it. A good coating on the top and it will normally season all of your food all the way down. Now we're gonna cover this with some aluminum foil. We're gonna give it a couple pulls on top for ventilation. And the reason we covered it with foil is so it doesn't dry out while it's cooking. So we're gonna pop this into our oven at 400 degrees for 40 minutes. Our green bean and potato casserole is finished. It looks and smells amazing. I love that it has a drier consistency versus doing it in the crock pot. So I think this might be my new favorite way to do it. Uh, mine did take closer to 60 minutes to get the potatoes fully cooked, so be aware of that. But look at all that great seasoning on there. It smells delicious. Cannot wait to dig in, as the dog is already doing. We've got some corn on the cob to go as a side, and then if you like to dip, which we love to dip in this household, uh, some ranch dressing, barbecue, or a little bit of this Walmart steak sauce is really good to dip your uh, potatoes, green bean sausage in. For dinner today, we're going to be doing up some barbecue pulled pork in the crock pot. So right here I have a half loin roast. It is boneless. So let's get it out of its packaging and we'll start working with it. To our roast, we're gonna add a little bit of the Grillmates Applewood Rub. And then also some minced onion. And just kind of push it in, make sure it's sticking. Flip it over. And I want to do fat side down in my Instapot, but we're gonna use crock pot setting. Okay, I've got my meat in the Instapot, and we're going to do slow cook for eight hours. Oops. There we go, we'll see you guys in eight hours. Okay guys, this is what dinner is looking like. 
So I'll insert a little overlay here, but the vegetables, just mixed vegetables, salt, pepper, and half a brick of cream cheese. Just cook them until they're cooked <laughs> and the cheese is melted. And then I've got my pulled pork here. The husband shredded it. I got home late. I had to work on our old house. So I wasn't here to do it the way I would normally do it, but husband shredded up really well. You can see all the little bits of seasoning in here from the rub we put on it. It tastes really good. I reheated mine and added the barbecue to it. And then he said he put some blue cheese dressing on it. So I'm gonna give it a try like that and see how it is. But that's gonna be it for this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you did enjoy. Hope to connect with you guys in the comments below. Please give it a thumbs up or thumbs down if you enjoyed the video or didn't. I just appreciate the engagement. And I hope to catch you guys in my next video. Bye.